You should use this football as an artifact. It's mine and Victor's. It's ours. Victor and I always used to play football with this ball when we were little. Thank you. And we got Vladimir and Victor's childhood football. Splendid work! This ball ought to let us jump six years into the past! There's still some time left before everyone gets here, so let's wait for them on the TM bus. And of course, after being briefly absent in the last episode, we do have Vladimir back. We just have to lose everyone else in the process. We'll have a very quick glaze over the eye natter. I'm not going to go through it at its own pace this time because it's, um, well, there's going to be more, more to come. But And it's mostly about bacon butties, but at least... JP has given his a 9.7. That's a, I did have a bacon butty this morning, actually. But um, mine was a bit too cold to count as a 9.7, unfortunately. But yeah, like I say, I want to give the Inata a good spotlight in most upcoming episodes. But right now, we've got something important to be doing. And that is run right into this guy who thinks football's a piece of rubbish. And I am very offended to hear that from you. Poindexter and Motivation as well. Both of these guys were on our squad in Inazuma 11 Go Light. Uh, Poindexter actually had a canon line of dialogue because he was the tutorial match while Motivation was just the, the really easy to get pal pack guy. So I dragged both of these guys through the main story of Inazuma 11 Go Light. I don't think I'll be doing so for Chrono Stones if they think football's a piece of rubbish. They have to say so under mind control from Protocol Omega, of course. Don't don't take it personally, of course. But um, yeah, that can be this episode's time waste instead of the inner link. We beat the Storming Normals. Our last chance to see Poindexter in a brand new game, and he's he's so gone. He's not even there to face us. He, j he can't bear to see us after we've given him such a crushing defeat. But nevertheless, we're going to head to the car park in order to board the TM bus and travel back six years. Gentlemen, I ought to inform you that after we've jumped, we won't be able to come back to the present for a while. Furthermore, I have a feeling in my fur that you'll be taking on some tough cookies after we time jump, so make sure your kit's up to scratch. I think Wonderbot is right. Arion, is there a place we could go and check out some new equipment? Yeah, there's a cool kit in the north of the shopping area nearby. It's not far if we take the car park exit. Okay, we'll meet here again once we're done then. Excellent, I'll be waiting. And so this is how they finally introduce equipment. I'm not actually going to go all the way to the cool kit because if I bought equipment, then it would just be very l early game, low level stuff. But... While these sports shoes are the only things I have, that would actually downgrade all of my stats. They're worse than the Ryman boots. But I, as a matter of example, I will give Arian the red bracelet to increase his stamina by literally one. That's the level of increments we're talking about here. I do need to heal, but I'm sure I'll get the opportunity to do so after we've time jumped. So, let's board the bus and head back six years. Okay, artifact installed. Fantastic! Oh, Arion, you're here already! But not the others. Bad news, team! The fluctuations in space time are getting weaker! We have to leave now! What? Aren't we gonna wait for everyone? There's no time! If we don't get started now, we'll never get history back in order! All right, then I think we should set off for the past straight away. Right, yo, let's do it. Back to go, six years. Let's go!
Is this the best? Yep, yeah, it should be. It's the right day. Victor and I should be in this park. Let's have a look around. With a special surprise. The old music from Riverside in Inazuma 11.1. It makes me so happy to hear this again. And it sounds exactly the same as it did before, but oh, it's it's selling. It's just sending all of the vibes straight back through me. Unless you're at a Kebe who says sounds bad like. So this is exactly the same. Like this would be a photo opportunity if we didn't already get it in the last episode. The park looks exactly the same as it did in the previous time we visited it in the present in the present day. But the music is different, and of course. Most importantly, a young Victor and Vladimir will be waiting for us. So as we say goodbye to this music already, I don't want it to stop. I'm wasting time just talking to people that keep listening, but no, we, we've got to carry on. Yes, look, Victor and me, six years younger. Yes, it's them for sure. Incroyable! We've really gone back in time! We've arrived just before I'm about to get injured. Victor climbs the tree and falls. I try to catch him, but my legs... Ah, uh, I see what's gonna happen. Are you sure you're okay with this? You won't be able to use your legs if we put history back as it was! If it's my fate, I have to accept it. I have to embrace my destiny and overcome it. I have no regrets. All I wanted was to play football with Victor one last time, so I'm happy. Victor can have football back now. If you're sure... Let's go. I don't think there's much time before it happens. Space-time interrupt. Stop! Get back! Huh? We meet again! Data retrieval complete. Understood. Huh? Is this who we're up against? That's right. They're called Protocol Omega. We will obliterate all obstacles in our path! We? Ryman's football stadium. This is where football will be buried. It seems they really do plan on settling this with football. Well, we're ready for them. That's what we came here for, after all. And so, that does mean that for the third time in less than ten episodes, we will once again be taking on Alpha and his team, Protocol Omega, without taking on anyone else in the meantime, might I add. But if we put aside the repetition, we can actually embrace the fact that we're here in Ryman's club room, the first time since it was a basketball court in the disrupted timeline. We have Vladimir, we have Victor, we have JP, Faye and Arian, as well as the Duplies. That's a good lineup. These guys are level 8, so make sure you're around the same level. We'll talk to Alpha to get started. Have you completed your match preparations? You betcha. Well, actually we haven't because we need to organize the lineup. And I tell you what, they completely jumble up the lineup. You have to spend a lot of time fixing this before you actually get started. Like... Vladimir is not on the pitch, and he needs to be. JP is not in goal, and he needs to be. The goalkeeper is up front, and he needs to be Ricardo. You've got some midfielders in the back, so we'll swap these guys around as well. We've got a forward there. We'll just get him off altogether. 
Yeah, make sure you've actually got a good lineup before you go into this, but JP is the one you want to have in goal. His, his keeping move is just as good as this guy's, and his catch stat is actually lower, but he does have access to his fighting spirit, which is what sells him. One smoothie and one iced coffee and make it snappy. I'm on it. Again, where'd he go? This is like the third time now. That's one smoothie coming right- Whoa! This is totally a football stadium and not my beach shack at all! I understand the need for a commentator, but this one is unusually irritating. We've beaten Protocol Omega once, we can beat them again. Right, we're ready for them this time. Let's put history right and give the gift of football back to Victor. Here they are. I'm actually level 6. I didn't realize I was that low, so this is going to be a little bit more of a challenge, but my formation is already arranged, and do bear in mind I currently have access to 4 Fighting Spirits and Phase Mixi-Max ability, plus 2 of my Fighting Spirits can be armified as well. These guys still only have Alpha in terms of Fighting Spirits. The people on there are exactly the same as before, nothing changes in that regard. He actually keep, they keep him on the left hand side, he's not a central striker like you would expect him to be. And once again, they've still got Adrastus Argos as the coach, which does benefit their special tactic, but we haven't met the guy in person, we've only seen him in cutscenes. But we're going to move into the actual match gameplay here at Ryman Stadium itself, they've picked this to inflict the maximum despair. So what's new, dudes? Last time Rune and Sherwin played in the Sherwins, but now they're alive and kicking in the Ryman team. There's only one way to find out who'll win, and that's by getting this match started. Kickoff time is in 3, 2, 1, go! That, that's what he means by go, the, the panning shot. So, straight away, kick wherever you like, don't matter. Off we go. It begins. Ryman dives straight in there on the attack, but Protocol Omega stopped them like a reef under a surfboard. Ouch! Ow! As ordered, we're focusing all our efforts on defense. Good. Which means for us, we need to get the ball back, and then once we've done so, add, fill the advance gauge with it. Uh, skinny! <laughs> That's a character I identify with quite a lot. I'm quite the skinny person myself. Fractal Repeller is a move we're going to be seeing a lot of while we're still making use of the Duplies. It does make sense that we wouldn't have access to the full Ryman team right now. I think that would be a little too good. We can actually take a shot if we want, but I'm not sure if it will go in. Something that's happened here is that Alpha has brought out his Fighting Spirit. So, I'm going to do the same thing. That's a new feature for Chrono Stones. Oh my, actually it's the goalkeeper who's done so, so I've made a bit of a mistake here. Because I do not have possession of the ball with Vladimir right now. Yes, it is the goalkeeper who's brought out his fighting spirit. But unlike the previous game, whenever you bring out a fighting... Whenever the opponent brings out a fighting spirit, you get the opportunity to do so yourself automatically. So I like that. I took a shot just to fill the advance gauge a little more and wear down his... Uh, TP, I didn't exactly expect it to go in. He has a fighting spirit active and Faye was just taking a regular shot. But I think I just wanted to see Bouncing Bunny, to be honest. We're not going to fill up the advance gauge anymore until we've regained possession of the ball. So that does mean we're going for another Fractal Repeller. But yeah, while I had possession of the ball with Faye, he does not have a fighting spirit. So there's nothing I could have done there. I could have Mixi-Maxed him to... 
sorry, mix and matched him in the dub to slightly raise the chances, but I still don't think it would have been good enough. We'll we'll get the goals in free time, don't worry about it. Let's just fill the advance gauge for now. Protocol Omega plan to defend tenaciously and score in the closing minutes. It's time to put an end to this. Are you listening, Blade? Loud and clear. I've brought your brother's aura with me. I'm going to mix him ax you with him. Victor's aura? Spot on. You and Victor are like two peas in a pod. I thought we might be able to put the both of you in that pod together. But Victor gave up football, right? Will his aura still have any power? I... I confess I am uncertain of the outcome. Oh. I believe in Victor's love of football. I think that's all we can do. Okay, I'm ready. Let's do it. Right you are! So we can now mix and match Vladimir with his own brother, Victor, to gain access to some of Victor's special moves at that. It's only Doom Sword Slash, the weakest move in Victor's arsenal, but we also get Doom Dive Drive, a much better one, which is a mega move. And of course, Vladimir is already um, got his fighting spirit open. It's still active, but in order to actually show off some of Victor's moves, I'm going to armor fly it and show you the level of power involved when you have a character that is both mixy maxed, mix and matched, and fighting spirit active. We don't have to spend any TP on our special moves. FSP zero. We're going to go for the strongest Victor one, Doom Dive Drive. It just uses up a little bit of our fighting spirit energy, and that's it. 520 power from a character who is less than level 10. Granted, we did lose a bit of that power while it was traveling through the air, but we broke through the Fighting Spirit special move and stunned the goalkeeper. That's the level of power involved when you combine mix and matching and Fighting Spirit. Go! Vladimir Blade scores with Doom Dark Drive. Awesomely effective and a totally tubular tongue twister. Yes! Thank you, Vitya. And so, do we go back to free time with that as well? Yes, we do. So, despite me being two levels too low, it's not a concern, really, as long as we have Vladimir mix and match with his brother and his fighting spirit active. So, like I said before, I could, when his fighting spirit gauge is about halfway down, I could then switch back to his regular fighting spirit to restore some of his FSP, but that would mean I wouldn't be able to see Victor's moves, would it? So that would be no fun. We've already made it back up to the guy again. Let's use Doom Sword Slash just to show off another Victor move. I mean, sh I'm sure we'll get to see Victor use his own moves in the game anyway, but we have got another goal on this guy. And we've depleted the health of his fighting spirit as well. His fighting spirit was useless in the grand scheme of things. And then he's still got to play the rest of the match in goal as well. And would you look at this, Vladimir's gauge has not even run out yet. The goal he has, but Vladimir is able to keep on going with a fair amount of FSP left. It's about one third left, I would say. In fact, go on, I've already introduced the gimmick, so we might as well demonstrate it just for, um... Um, okay, it doesn't look like it's actually going to let us at the moment. I don't know if that's just a, a cons 
contact sensitive thing or or yeah you would normally be able to tap these two bottom two buttons at the top right of the bottom screen to switch back to your normal fighting spirit but maybe because he doesn't actually have a dribbling move with his fighting spirit it's gonna stop me I certainly don't have enough FSP to use um, and the, the 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 doom ray thingies that his that he's known for but we still have enough FSP to go for a hat trick I have gone for all three of Vladimir's moves now in tropic arrows doom dive drive and doom sword slash all without running out of FSP and he's still got it now I thought it would at least run out after taking the shot but Fighting spirits, man, they are busted out of proportion and just think that you can make them last even longer by switching an armified one back to normal fighting spirits partway through usage. I've said it before and I'll say it again, fighting spirits are completely broken, but at least while in the last game they were broken in a kind of boring way because they could only be countered with other fighting spirits, in this game you have access to more and more fighting spirits and you can mix and match as well to overpower other fighting spirits or just try to level them in terms of ability. There's so much going on that you that it, it becomes fun again. And armified fighting spirits allow you to use your regular shooting moves and level them up in the process. I used Flurry Dash about three times with Vladimir while he had his armified fighting spirit active and that was all working towards leveling up the move and that's one of my favorite things to do in the Inazuma 11 series like you're gonna see hyper swiper level up fairly soon I would think because I use this move a lot but in turn it can also level up a lot to make to compensate for that leveling up moves does make them slightly more powerful it, it applies to all moves whether they're shooting moves defensive moves anything and they level up simply through the process of using them again and again. But whereas in the last game you could barely do that because you were too busy using your normal fighting spirit animations, now you can armify your fighting spirit and spam your regular special moves with no consequence because it won't drain your TP gauge. I could just use a Hyper Swiper six times in a row if I wanted without losing anything. And that's why I like Armified Fighting Spirits. I'm using my regular moves to beat Fighting Spirit level players. But we've made it to half time with a big advantage. Ready to engage. Okay, let's keep snipping away. <laughs> I'm glad you got a chance to speak, Harry. Wham! Kickable fast because the second half is totally kicking off. And we're doing it straight away. No story involvement in between it or anything. Not even an advanced gauge. Vladimir is pretty much out of action at the moment. But right now, let's think. So we've used Vladimir's fighting spirit and his mix and match. You'd think that would be the end of the brokenness. But nah, I could just bring out a fighting spirit with Arian as well. He's got an armified one, which we might as well do. As a reminder, in case you were ever struggling with this match, you can bring out a fight, an armified fighting spirit with Vladimir, and you can mix and match him with Victor. You can mix and match Faye with the dinosaur. You can bring out JP's fighting spirit in goal. You can bring out Ricardo's fighting spirit. You, you can just do all of it, man. <laughs> Granted, uh, JP and Ricardo, of course, cannot armify their fighting spirits, and Faye curiously does not have a fighting spirit, but it would be a little bit broken if he did, because right now we're going for another Zephyr shot with Arian. Yeah, Protocol Omega, these are the main villains of the game right now, and we're taking them on for the third time in ten episodes and making an absolute joke of them. If Protocol Omega want to take football away from us, they're going to have to come up with something because right now we are absolutely creaming them and Arian has got way more in the tank. Uh, let's see if I can actually get the ball with him and use Arian to demonstrate the whole idea of 
uh, switching back to regular fighting spirits midway. I was about to say, because he's got a dribbling move with his fighting spirit, but no, he doesn't. It's, it's Arch Pegasus, so he he cannot do that, but never mind. Okay, I've, I've used <laughs> my special moves a bit too much. Let's just kick stick with some regular animations for now, just to remind you that they actually exist. But, you know, I could be leveling up Heartbeat and Easy Breezy to unlimited proportions if I chose to. Instead, we're, we're just going to keep that to running in the 90s. Okay, so as we move into a score line of 5-0, let's talk less about the gameplay and how much we're demolishing Protocol Omega and think more about the context of the story right now. Because Vladimir is making one heck of a sacrifice right here. He's travelled through time just to make sure he loses the use of his leg and becomes per permanently injured just so that Victor doesn't throw a strop when he was a kid and quit football. I'm sure there's a better way around this, but they do actually talk about this in two different ways. There's the game context and the anime context. And so the context in the game is slightly more honourable. See how we've already levelled up Hyper Swiper? It's unbelievable. I'll try and do the same for Heartbeat as well, because I might as well. But yeah, so the whole context with Vladimir in the game is that he just doesn't believe in a timeline that wasn't meant to be, and that's why he allows you to go back and unfix his leg. Whereas in the anime, the explanation is less about his beliefs and more he just states the fact that trying to create a timeline that never truly existed probably wouldn't work. Just something would go wrong, you wouldn't be able to account for the kind of things that could, that could go wrong as a result. And, you know, both, you know, one make him seem a cooler character, the other's more realistic. As realistic as you can be when talking about <laughs> travelling through time to break someone's legs. But, um, yeah, we don't have any uh, defensive special tactics right now, so we're just going to have to allow them to do this. It's called Tactical Play AX3 on the screen, but as we know through looking at the coach Argos, it's actually called Bermuda Triangle, I believe. So, Alpha, you've been in this game for quite a while. Do you want to, like, bring out your fighting spirit or something? And put us under any sort of mild pressure? It w I wouldn't I wouldn't mind, to be honest. I've got JP with a fighting spirit. I can stop whatever you try to do. But there, I even managed to take the ball from someone who was using a special move just because, through bad luck alone, it failed. Yeah, I'm not going to make much of an effort to stop these guys. I'm not going to bring out JP's fighting spirit or anything. Just take a sh- I tried to give them a chance! <laughs> and they just got a foul instead. Well, that's that's what happens when you try to go easy-ish on Protocol Omega. But you still need to know exactly why they're trying to get rid of football in the first place. We've had some explanation on why they're trying to do it. But we don't... I don't really know whether whether they think they're in the right or not for doing it. it would be interesting to learn a little bit more. But um so yeah, we've we talked about Vladimir and finally they're gonna bring out Alpha's fighting spirit. I'm not gonna bring out mine, just gonna give him a chance. There's Feng Huang, the first time we're actually seeing Feng Ho Feng Huang in normal play, because normally he's required to armor fire immediately. Hopefully, we'll let him take a shot on us so we can see what his move looks like. I'm still going to try and stop it with Combustion Catch, but more just so I can see the move fail, because I hate Combustion Catch. It's terrible that they gave that to JP. They could have given him anything else. And that move is actually very similar to Fire Phoenix from, from Inazuma 11-1. Which I like, because his fighting spirit, Feng Huang, is actually is actually called Ho in Japanese, which, if you're a Pokemon fan, you'll probably know Ho is just Japanese for Phoenix. Not sure why they changed the name to Feng Huang for the games, but by, me by definition it is meant to be a Phoenix, so they gave him a special move that's based on the Phoenix moves from the original game. But we're not quite in the time zone of the original game right now, unfortunately. We're only six years in the past instead of ten. But we did fight Alpha 
10 years in the past at one point, and he could have used that on us if he wasn't so focused on armor-fying himself. But anyway, I think it's safe to say <laughs> that their moves have a pretty high foul ratio. Uh, something I want to talk about there, actually, is the passing. If you remember from Inazuma 11 Go, I was terrible at trying to pass over people's heads. You could do it by holding down the 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 wherever you touched on the touch screen to make more powerful passes and especially better goal throws that would go much further. But throughout the entire project, I just couldn't get it to work. But passing has been buffed significantly in Inazuma 11 Girl Chrono Stones. All you have to do is tap wherever and it will fly right over the opponent's head. You could pass with some opponent directly in your way and they won't be able to do anything about it. I I think it's a little unrealistic how much better passing is in this game, but it's more fun as a result. I, I kind of love how broken it is. Because <laughs> you can just pass around freely and do whatever you like without much worry. It's, it's easier, but fun. Anyway, so this has been a very long match all for the purpose of fixing the timeline, but it is important. We do need Victor Blade back in our squad to give us the Inazuma 11 Go game that we're used to. Mike can take one last shot on us to try and make it 5-2. I don't think JP's stunned anymore, but unfortunately, his very pretty special move failed. So it's not going to be too much difficulty for JP. With a score of 5-1, we have beaten Protocol Omega for the third time. Are we done with these guys yet? No, this can't be! Alright, we won the match! Faye has got Dance on Air, which is a very good dribbling move. Expect to see that a lot. Failure. This result is difficult to process. Yes, sir. Where to retreat? Understood. Alpha. What is this feeling? It is as if there is an itch I cannot scratch. Mission complete. So have we changed history? Yeah, the real Ryman Football Club should be back to normal now. Vitya, we saved football. Vladimir. Was there nothing we could have done? Remember what Vladimir said? If it's my fate, I have to accept it. I have to embrace my destiny and overcome it. That's true. And Vladimir still has his passion for football. Well, let's get back to the present. The victor from your timeline should be waiting for you. Yeah, let's go. Thank you, Vladimir. <laughs> <laughs> 